When I was four years old, I became Daddy's little angel, Linda, on The Danny Thomas Show. And you might remember me as Penny Robinson on Lost in Space. Well, no more kid roles for me. I now play the mom in real life, with two kids of my own, and they're as old as the kids I used to play. Hi, I'm Angela Cartwright, and today I'm a photographer and own a specialty gift shop in Los Angeles called Rubber Boots. Of all the roles I've ever played, the one that everyone remembers is Brigitte von Trapp in The Sound of Music. It's one of the most watched movies of all time. Millions saw it in the theaters, and millions more tune in on TV to hear Maria teach the Von Trapp children to sing. I'll always have those memories, and so will the Von Trapp family. Oh, you didn't know they were real? Yes, they are. In 1965, the hit Broadway play, The Sound of Music, became an Oscar-winning movie. called The Story of the Trapp Family Singers, which chronicled the life of Baron Georg von Trapp and his family. A well-to-do retired naval captain, the Baron was a widower with seven children who needed some schooling. A young novitiate from a local convent named Maria Augusta Cuchera came to the von Trapp family not as a governess, but as a tutor. The Baron and his children were already great lovers of music when Maria Augusta arrived. Using her own musical background, Maria taught the children how to sing in harmony, and what started as a family hobby soon led to appearances in the renowned Salzburg Music Festival and rave reviews for all who heard the family sing. Maria had become an integral part of the family, and in the fall of 1927, she and the Baron von Trapp were married. They stayed in the house outside of Salzburg for the next 10 years, adding two more daughters to the family. In 1938, the Von Trapps were requested to perform for the birthday celebration of Germany's ruler, Adolf Hitler. The family's refusal, along with the Baron's refusal to serve in the German Navy, forced the Von Trapps to leave their beloved home, rather than face the impending wrath of the Third Reich. The family fortune had been lost in a bank collapse. The singing Von Trapps then obtained an advance from an American concert promoter and used the money to slip quietly out of Austria, heading for a new life in the United States. I remember we were uh, celebrating my older sister's birthday. All of a sudden, we heard all the bells ring. We have 32 churches in Salzburg, you know. So my father called the police and he said, well, Hitler just moved in. So that was a horrible thing, you know. He came like a thief. We had the opportunity to go, you know, but my father did not make the decision by himself. He, he called us all together. And so he asked each one of us if they wanted to go and to America to sing, you know. And uh, each one said yes. The family arrived in New York in 1938, and then uh, I was born in Philadelphia in, in January of 39. Uh, but we didn't like living in the city, so we started looking for a place in the country right away, and after several years, uh, decided on Vermont, because the, the countryside really reminded my family of, of Austria. My mother really wanted to share the beauty of this place with people. And she said to me once, Johannes, this is too beautiful to keep to ourselves. We, we must share it with people. And, and she honestly felt that way. So pretty much uh, we were in the hotel business by 1950. When we were preparing for a concert tour, we would rehearse uh, from 10 to 12 and from 4 to 6 every day. We were motivated by survival. Uh, we landed in this country with... Uh, uh, $3.50. It uh, was a constant issue of uh, keeping the wolf from the door. The Trap family singers were usually away from their Stowe, Vermont Lodge about eight months out of the year, touring the world with their unique performance. Then, in 1947, tragedy struck as the Baron fell ill and died unexpectedly. My father had been a real stabilizing force for my mother and that after his death, life was much more difficult for her. 
Determined to keep the Trapp family tradition alive, Maria pulled the family together, continuing the musical tours until 1956. After singing 20 years, <laughs> we thought people should do whatever they would like to do. And uh, so we stopped. While several of the children went their separate ways, Maria settled in Vermont to oversee the growing hotel business and the growing family. She had such a strong will, she could get anything done if she decided she wanted to do it. She was really amazing that way. And also just really intelligent, had a ton of energy. She was just a, an amazing lady to be around. You could see why it was that she had such a strong influence on other people and why it was that she sort of, that she got the family story told. When the, the Hollywood film was uh, completed, uh, they gave a showing in New York City for us before the film was released. I remember that uh, we were all in, in stitches over the scene where Liesl dances with the telegraph boy because my oldest sister really was a very shy person. Did I not tell you that bedtime is to be strictly observed in this house? I was not satisfied with how they portrayed my father because he was not a strict man. I got consoled with the whole thing when I thought what they really show is that my father had principles. People really, they've got their version of the Sound of Music Von Trapps, and then we know our version of sort of, you know, the Vermont Von Trapps or the, the real Von Trapps. You've got to explain to people that all the names were changed in the movie and all that. I don't know what, oh, do you oh, sing? Do you, do you sing? sing? That's got to be oh, by on. far. <laughs> do you but, sing? Yeah. And I would say uh, no better than anyone else. Yeah, or it's <laughs> in, a skip generation, shower. Gene. <laughs> in 1980, the Von Trapps faced a new kind of adversity when the prosperous family lodge burned to the ground. It was a terrible tragedy. My mother never fully recovered from the fire. Her apartment was her life, and when that went, she really began to decline. And she died seven years after the fire. I miss her a great deal. Despite their grief, the Von Trapps once again rose to the challenge and rebuilt the lodge so the family legend could continue to live, perhaps with a message to all. The family motto uh, on our crest, it says, Nec aspera terent. Let not adversity frighten you. My family was unable to stay in Austria. They were not frightened by the adversity of leaving. They really never have been frightened, even when things were tough.